An ACL injury is a rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament. There's a difference between a tear and a rupture. So it's, it's the anterior cruciate ligament connects the femur to the tibia, and it's a very common sports medicine injury, one that, uh, one that requires extensive surgery typically. Uh, it's caused by very high forces in the ligament. It's something that you see in soccer, basketball, you see it in skiing. Every year there's about 250,000 people that have ACL ruptures, and about half of these end up having reconstructive surgery. Well, we see that in a lot of these people getting osteoarthritis, you see signs of it beginning at about five years after the time of the ACL rupture and, and repair. Five years is not a good time because that means that you've got a, um, a healthy person, a young person, who is say 20 years old that tears an ACL and by the age of 25 they're showing signs of early stage osteoarthritis. Now 25 they're not really going to, they're not going to feel that they have OA, they're not even going to know it, but you can see it developing on an x-ray and, and although they don't have pain associated with that, by the time they're 30 they will have pain and, and they'll be starting to hurt and by the time they're between 30 and 35 they're going to be wanting to have an artificial knee put in or something like that and that is not what you want to do in somebody who's at age. One of the things that we've been able to do is over the years is really go back and forth with informing each other's work, what's important, what's happening, what are we what are we finding from these other studies that make us want to delve deeper into the work that we're doing? What we've seen in our, in our previous research is that people who have torn their ACLs that are in the group that's going to get osteoarthritis at five years. If you go back in time to about six months after the surgery, you can see that they're walking in a way that puts loads in their knee differently than those who don't get osteoarthritis. And so we can separate these people into two groups. When we go and see five years later who develops early osteoarthritis, we can go back and have all these measures that we've done and say, I wonder what's associated with the development of this. We're hoping that by looking at the, at the loads from gait, the biochemical changes, and the finite element modeling that looks at the stress and strain inside the joint, that we're going to understand what's happening and why certain people get osteoarthritis after ACL injuries and others don't.